ओम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा सद्गुचरणारविंदाभ्या नम ब्रह्मसूत्र चाप्टर थ्री फस्ट पाद फस्टिकरण तदंतर प्रतिपत्तिकरण तदंतर प्रतिपत्त ब्रह्मति संपरीश्वक्त प्रश्न निरूपाभ्यात्मकूयस्वात् प्राणगते अग्नियाति गतिश्रुतेरिति चेत न पाक्तवात् प्रथमे अश्रवणादि चेत न उपपत्ते अश्रुवादी चेत न इष्टादिकारीण प्रचीते भाक्त वाम अनात्म तथा ही दर्शयति कृतायाधिकरण कृतायये अनुषयवान् दृष्ट स्मृतिभ्या यथेत अने वंच चरणादी चेत न उपलक्षणाते काशनाजिनी आनर्थक्यम चेत न तत्पेक्षत्वात् सुकृत दुष्कृत तो बादरी सूत्र एंड दि नेक्स्ट सूत्र इस दि नेक्स्ट अधिकरण अनिष्टाधिकारियाधिकरण अनिष्टाधिकारीण अभी चुत This is the 303rd running Brahma Sutra, third chapter, first pada, twelfth Brahma Sutra. Here, the movement of jivas doing evil karmas, papa karmas, that is now described. And we saw the twelfth sutra in the last class. This sutra, Anistha Dikari Nam Apicha Shrutham. This sutra we saw in the last class. which is a puru pakshi sutra as i mentioned and this says for those papa karmis papistas for them also panchagni dwara heaven travel is accepted that is not only punya karmis will go to heaven but also papa karmis also may go to heaven now siddhanta comes in the next sutra that we will read today samyamane तनुभूय इतरेशा आरोह अवरोह तद्गति दर्शना संयमने तनुभूय इतरेशा आरोह अवरोह तद्गति दर्शना थर्टीन सूत्र अस्पाद थर्ड चाप्टर थ्री हंड्रेड फोर्थ रनिंग ब्रह्म सूत्र हियर अगेन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द मूवमेंट ऑफ ए जीवा हू हैज डन ईवल डीड्स दट इज कंटिन्यू दिस सिद्धांत सूत्र and this sutra refutes the views of the previous mantra which was a purva pakshi sutra so this is a siddhanta sutra and let us do first the general analysis of this sutra the panjagni route that will not be taken by those upasakas who will take krishna gati that is not discussed in this adhikaranam to the other group of people who will not take krishna gati are papa karmis so the route they take is that they go to yamaloka and they suffer there and again they come back without going through panjagni route so the pramanam for this is given in katopanishad in the first chapter second section sixth mantra that we already discussed in the previous sutra and just to refresh the sutra the mantra was na samparaya prathibhadi bhalam pramadhyantam vitta mohena modham अयम लोको नास्ती परयति मानी पुनः पुनः वशमापद्यते मे सो डिफरेंट लोकास आर देयर फॉर डिफरेंट पीपल दिस इज द एसेंस ऑफ दिस सूत्र बिकॉज डिफरेंट पीपल डू डिफरेंट कर्मास नाउ लेट अस डू द वर्ड एनालिसिस द सूत्र इज सम्यमने तनुभूय इतरेशाम आरोह अवरोहौ तद्गति दर्शनात दैट इज द सूत्र here anubhuya tu having experience anubhuya having experienced the karma phalam mainly papa phalam samyamane samyamane refers to yamaloka 
இம் யமலோகா தே கம் டவுன் ஆரோக அவரோகா த பாத் ஆஃப் டிபார்ச்சர் இஸ் ஆரோகா அண்ட் தி பாத் ஆஃப் அரைவல் பேக் ஹியர் இஸ் அவரோகா சோ தி பாத் ஆஃப் டிபார்ச்சர் அண்ட் அரைவல் தட் இஸ் டிஃபரண்ட் இதரேஷாம் ஃபார் தி அதர்ஸ் தத் கதி தர்ஷனாத் சின்ஸ் ஸ்ருதி ரிவீல்ஸ் த டிராவல் டுவர்ஸ் யமலோகா this is the running meaning for this sutra <clears throat> now we have to see the significance of the words to understand the exact meaning samyamane samyamane means the different kinds of yamalokas coming under yamadharma raja all are called samyam giving punishment by the lord of death punishes arrogant jeevas to that means to negate the purupakshi however to negate the purupakshi anubhuya in that loka they experience their papa phalam by going through different forms of suffering and then they come down aroha avaroha they have different path of climbing this is the destination is yamaloka not swarga loka here yamaloka and panjagni is not involved here and they will not go to swarga in swarga loka it is in panjagni route but here it is different tad gati darshanat yamaloka that is seen in the upanishad darshanat that is revealed in the upanishad let us go to the next sutra so papa karma karmi is what happens to them next sutra is smaranti cha smaranti cha 14th sutra first pad of third chapter 300 sutra nirvana sutra and the description of the journey of the jeevas doing evil deeds is continued again here here vyasacharya wants to show that papa karmi will go to naraka lok they go to naraka loka alone not to swarga loka because puru pakshi said they will also go to swarga loka here no he said naraka loka they will go here smriti and purana pramanam they both are given and all pramanas they tell us that papa karmis will go to yama loka only smaranti the smriti all those pramanas those granthas they all say they will go to yama loka only now let us do the word analysis simple sutra smaranti cha the shrutis also reveal this fact shrutis includes smritis puranas and all this is the running meaning and smaranti is actually an idiom used to say rishis remember they remember so here remembrance is written in the form of smriti granthas and they declare the fact that all jeevas they will not go to swarga lokas but some of them go to yama loka due to papa karma that is substance of that and then they are they are now to tell about what are the different the the loka, lower lokas next sutra says that apicha saptha apicha saptha 15th sutra first pad of third chapter 306th running brahma sutra here vyasacharya gives purana praman pramanam from the puranas this is said in various puranas in puranas seven patala lokas are significantly said actually they say 21 also but in purana seven of them are very popular sapta patala lokas are well known to us athala vithala suthala thala thala mahathala rasathala patala lokas these are the seven lokas apicha apicha means moreover sapta sapta means seven lower lokas are mentioned in the puranas now let us see the significance of this word apicha means moreover that is the conjunction of purana pramana the conjunction of the purana pramanam to indicate that they put apicha sapta patala lokas that are the various lokas patala lokas here seven lokas so they will all go to in those places various places in the patala lokas with this 15 sutra is over now let us go to the next sutra these are all descriptive sutras so i am not spending too much time to analyze them the next one tatrapi cha tad vyaparat avirodah 16th sutra first pad of third chapter 307th running brahma sutra tatrapi cha tad vyaparat avirodah the same topic again continues in this sutra and this sutra answers a small incidental question based on the previous sutra in the previous sutra what was said it was said that the adharmic people papishtas they will go to yamaloka and there are seven seven lokas several lokas actually in the puranas they are not called yama lokas when we look into puranas the lower lokas athala vithala all the shlokas they are presided by other devatas 
and not by Yamadharma Raja himself. Actually, Chitragupta is the one who presides over all these lower lokas. Then how can we tally the other lokas with Yamar Loka then? Father Vyasa Acharya says, all the presiding deities of the loka, lower lokas mentioned in the Puranas, they function under Yamadharma Raja only. He is their boss. So therefore, whatever Chitragupta rules, whatever loka Chitragupta rules, it is the rule of Yamadharma Raja only because he is his boss. Therefore, Patala Lokas are indirectly presided over by Yamadharma Raja. And so that is why it is included in the same list. Now let us do the word analysis. First, let us do the running meaning. Since Yamadharma Raja's influence is accepted in those Lokas also, Avirodaha, there is no contradiction. Now let us see the distinguishing of the words. Tatra. Tatra means in those lokas, that is in the Sapta lokas mentioned in the previous sutras, all those Patala lokas and all. He has his assistant, who? Yamadharma Raja. He has his assistant there to take care of all other lokas. Tad Vyaparat. So Yamadharma Raja influences or functions in all in this way. So in this context, we take the meaning of influence or power, even though directly Chitragupta controls the seven lokas. Is the influence of Yamadar, under the influence of Yamadharma Raja. So the ultimate control is with Yamadharma Raja only. So there is no contradiction between the Katopanishad Shruti and Purana Vakyas. Actually, this discussion is essentially because we quoted the Katopanishad Shruti. Between this and the Puranas, there is no contradiction. That is what is being established. Let us go to the next sutra. Vidya Karmanoho Iti Tu Prakritatvat. Vidya Karmanoho Iti Tu Prakritatvat. 17th Brahma Sutra, first Pada, third chapter, 308th running Brahma Sutra. <coughs> and in this sutra, Vyasacharya answers a doubt which may arise based on the second Shruti Pramanam that we quoted in the beginning. Whether Adharmic people travel by Krishna Gati is our question. So they will travel is a Purupakshi's contention, but Siddhanta says Adharmic people will go to lower loka only as quoted from Chandogya and Katopanisha. <coughs> so up to the last sutra, Vyasacharya analyzed Katopanishad mantra. Here Vyasacharya is going to discuss the Chandogya Upanishad Pramana. And this mantra says those people who do not go through these two paths, what are the two paths? Krishna Gati and Shukla Gati, two paths, they will go through a third path. Actually, I mentioned this briefly in the last class. So, Chandogya Upanishad, fifth chapter, tenth mantra, tenth section, eighth mantra. Atha, etayoho patoho, na katare na cha, na tani imani kshudrani, asakrit avartini, bhutani bhavanti. Jaya swamriyasva ityetatim. Triti yagum stanam, triti yagum stanam, tena asau loko na sampuriatem, tasmatem, jugupsetam, tadesha shloka. That is that mantra, 5.10.8. So we translated the two paths as what? As Shuglagati and Krishna Gati. So those who do not take do, taste these two gatis, they will go through Adogati to Yamaloka. Now Purupakshi says, why not these two mean Krishna Gati and Shukla Gati and Ado Gati meaning for the third if they refer to Krishna Gati and Shukla Gati? He asks how you arrived at the above meaning. He asks this question. For that Vyasacharya says, when you do not know the meaning of the pronoun, you get the meaning by context. So Prakarana Pramanena. There is a Prakarana Pramanam. So Sarvanama Shabdaha, Sarvanama Arthaha Nyayate. There is a Prakarana Pramanena. So when you have pronouns. So the biggest Mahavakyam that we all know is Tattvamasi. We have only pronouns. This Mahavakyam has all the three pronouns. So how do you arrive at the meaning of Tat? It is from Tat is equal to Sat in Chandogya Upanishad. So you go to Chandogya Upanishad to understand the meaning of Tat as Sat. Tvamasi. Tat Tvam, tat tvam, tvam Asi means Sat Tvam Asi. And Tvam refers to Chit. So Tat Chit Asi. So the pronoun can be deciphered with the help of Prakarana. In Chandogya, in the previous sutra, Shukla Gati has been elaborately talked about. <clears throat> so the first Devata said as part of Shukla Gati is Archihi, then other Devatas. So the Upanishad also mentioned 
this shukla gati is taken by upasakas not karmi is upasakas so with shraddha if a person practices a saguna brahma upasana that is called vidya here in this in this mantra vidya refers to the one who practices saguna brahma upasana saguna upasana marga is called shukla gati so those who practice yagnas yagas and all that karma marga they are called they is called krishna gati so upasana marga leads to shukla gati and karma marga leads to krishna gati so after introducing these two margas these two ways the upanishad mentions those who do not practice upasana and karma will get adogati other than krishna gati and shukla gati now let us see the word analysis of this sutra the sutra is what vidya karmanaha vidya refers to shukla gati people upasakas and karmanaha karmis iti tu prakrtatvat there is a sutra vidya karmanaha the path of upasana and karma <clears throat> all those people who the follow the path of upasana or karma iti that is the meaning of the word etayo ho etayo ho the original mantra from chandogya that we just read so prakrtatvat since they are the topic of discussion so this is the running meaning now let us see the significance of these words vidya karmanaha vidya marga and karma marga vidya marga is upasana marga as i told earlier so the marga which is the vidya phala so vidya karma phala is either shukla gati or krishna gati and this is the meaning of the pronoun etayo which occurs in the fifth chapter 10th section 8th mantra of chandogya upanishad there is a mantra atha etayo patoho that mantra that we just read so in the upanishad etayo is the sixth case so therefore vyasacharya uses the the word vidya karmano etayo is equal to vidya karmano iti artha so this is the meaning prakritatvat that is the prakaranam which we come to know from the previous sutra now let us go to the next sutra na tritiye tathopalabdehe na tritiye tathopalabdehe 18th sutra first pada third chapter 309th rani brahma sutra first let us do the general analysis of this sutra here vyasacharya says the third path known as adogati mentioned in chandogya upanishad the five stages are not involved and they are involved in manushya janma only they are swarga loka panja panjagni vidya all the five stages are what swarga megha bhumi manushya and nari purusha nari so this is experienced by us and all the jivarasis are not born in the same method this is only for manushya janma the reproduction is not similar in all living beings the jivarasis are classified into four types what are those in some cases number 1 in some cases the father mother male female mating is not involved when the jivas come down from swarga loka the ap jala shariram the apa shariram gets converted to soma shariram and then soma shariram gets converted into vrishti the rainy waters then the vrishti falls down on the earth and the water pool is there all over and according to shastra mosquitoes are seen to be the moisture born beings so in the case of those insects they do not go through all the five stages at all so from vrishti from rain waters they become the prani and they do not go through the third fourth and fifth conversions therefore in the case of insects we don't have all the five stages and the another type of jivarasis when vrishti jalam falls on earth plants are born and when coming out through earth they become plant kingdom so vrishti annam conversion does not take place in case of plant kingdom they are beings born by breaking open the earth so the plant jivas come out in the form of trees plants do not have the fourth and fifth stage of conversion so the previous one mosquitoes and all they didn't have third fourth and fifth now plant kingdom they didn't have fourth and fifth stage of conversion fourth and fifth is purusha nari <clears throat> so this is the shastrik approach so even if we study locally without the help of shastra we know several things are born without going through the five stages in some pranis males themselves become pregnant 
and give birth to babies. In the case of certain plants, when we take the branch of the tree, the next plant is born and we do not see several stages at all. Therefore, we cannot apply five stages, Panja Agni, in the case of all the living beings. This is the essence of the Sutra. Now let us see the word analysis. Na Trithiye Tathopalabdehe. That is a Sutra. Na Trithiye. So five stages are not relevant with regard to the third path. Five stages. Third path is what? Adogadi. Tathopalabdehe. Since it is known from the Shruti. Now let us see the significance of the words. Na. Na means not there. It means the five stages are not there in the third path, Adogati, which is other than Krishna Gati and Shukla Gati. Tathopalabdehe, that is seen, or Pratyaksha Anubhava Pramanam is there, or Shastra Pramanam is there. And Shankaracharya takes the Shastra Pramanam, so he gives the quotation from the fifth chapter, tenth section, eighth mantra, Chandogya, that he just saw. So by saying these words, born and gone, they refer to those things which are instantaneously born and gone with short period of life. We know a lot of Jivarasis, they are just born and just gone. It does not refer to the human being. In English, we call it mushroom growth. <laughs> this is some kind of usage. They do not have time for five stages at all. So if you remember Katopanishad, it is said like mushroom, things are born and gone. So the instantaneousness, instantaneousness <laughs> indicates the absence of the five stages mentioned in the Panjagni Vidya. Then the Puru Pakshi, he raises a question. If the five stages are not there, then how come Chandogya Upanishad 5th chapter, 3rd section, 3rd mantra says that the rudimentary body becomes the full-fledged body only in the 5th stage? If you remember all those mantras, those sections which I already saw. At the time of death, this is a rudimentary, very minute, that subtle body, physical body, comes all that we have stored. So here you say five stages are not required. And if you ask, Shankaracharya, he answers, the word Purusha represents Manusha Shariram only. The word Purusha among the five stages, Purusha and Nari, Purusha represents only Manusha Shariram only. The rudimentary body is to be converted into Manusha Sharira. So it has to undergo five stages if that has to be done. In other cases, five stages are not required. So if a Manusha Shariram should be born, it has to go to five stages. Otherwise, the other stages are not required. So previous sutra refers to Manusha Janma and here it refers to, in this sutra, it refers to other cases other than Manusha Janma. As I told you, insects, plants and all that. Tatha Upalabdehe, that is found in the Chandogya itself, fifth chapter mantra, which we just quoted. Let us go to the next sutra. Smaryate Apicha Loke. Smaryate Apicha Loke, 19th sutra, first pada, third chapter, 310th running Brahma Sutra. So the argument <clears throat> commenced in the sutra 17 to refute the objections of Purva Pakshi in sutra 12, that is continued here. Here, Vyasacharya says, <clears throat> even in the case of human beings, Manusha Janma, this rule of five stages is only a general rule. And there are exceptions here as we see in the Puranas. Manushyas, they require five stages, correct. That means they are womb born, born out of the wombs, through the wombs. Anything born out of the mother's womb is called Jarayujam. <clears throat> there are specific terms for all that. And in the case of human beings, five stages are mentioned in the previous sutra. And there are exceptions even in the case of human beings. For example, if you take in the Puranas, Drishtadhyumna, a Mahabharata character. Drishtadhyumna was born out of Homa Kunda without undergoing five stages from Agni. He was not regularly born through the father-mother combination. Similarly, Draupati. Sita, they are all born with exceptional different backgrounds. Therefore, five stages are only samples and not meant for all Jeevarasas. There are exceptions as revealed by the Puranas. So five stages should be read as for some Jeevas and not for all Jeevas. Now let us see the word analysis. Smaryate apicha loke. 
Api cha loke means birth of the people of the world, all those who are born in the world, without going through, going through the five stages, smaryate is known through smritis. So birth of people without going through the five stages in the world are known through these smritis. This is the running meaning. Now let us see the significance of the words. Smaryate means Shruti Pramane. The Shruti Pramana is there by which all the Smritis also like Mahabharata, Ramayana, they are all taken, Puranas. And in the case of some sages also, Rishis, Lord directly entered the womb of the mother, Loke, Drishtadimna Jiva. That is an example in this world. And they are the special cases of birth without going through the Panchagni, the five stages. So five stages, they are not compulsory for all Jivarasis. That is assertion. For Upasana and for Vairagya Siddhartham, five stages are mentioned in Chandogya Upanishad. It is only for that purpose. It is not a generalization. There are exceptions. Let us go to the next Sutra. Darshana Acha. Darshana Acha, 28th Sutra, first part of the third chapter, 311th Brahma Sutra. The argument again that comes in the comes in Sutra 17 is continued again. Having given the Shruti and Smriti Pramanam, the Anubhava Pramanam is given here in this Sutra. So as the word in word, the, the word that the, the Anubhava, Anubhava Pramanena Darshanath, the word Darshanath, it indicates Anubhava Pramanena Darshanath. So Pratyaksha Pramanam in this case is Jivarasis are classified into four types as I mentioned earlier. So four types of Jivarasis they are mentioned in the 18th Sutra that can be taken for this Sutra also. And what are the four types of Jivarasis we mentioned? One is Jarayujam, womb born beings, humans and all. Then Andajam, egg born beings, birds, reptiles, those kinds of things. Udbijam, earth born beings, the plants and all that. Finally, Shvedajam, moisture bond, insects, microorganisms, those kinds of things. So these are the four categories of Jivarasis. And the third and fourth types, they do not have fourth and fifth stages as we see in the human birth. Fourth and fifth stages of what? Panjagni. So the Udbijam, the earth bond beings like plants and all. And also Shvedajam, the microorganisms and all, they don't go through the fourth and fifth stages, the Purusha and Nari, that stage. As, as we see in human birth. And in the case of microorganisms also, they are born without any five stages. This is the general analysis. Darshanath chap, from observation also. This is not, from observation also, this is not Darshanath chap. That means what? The five stages are not compulsory for all the Jivarasis. Now let us see the significance of the words. Darshanath. Dashanath means seeing or observation or Pratyaksha Pramanath. Shankaracharya takes the 18th Sutra as Shruti Pramana Sutra, Sutra and the 20th Sutra as Pratyaksha Pramana Sutra. Cha, the word Cha, joins all the three Sutras, 18, 19 and 20. Cha, in, in addition to Shruti and Smriti, there is Pratyaksha Pramanam also. Now let us go to the next Sutra. Trutiya Shabda Avarodaha Samshoka Jasya. Trutiya Shabda Avarodaha. Samshoka Jasya. This is the 21st Sutra, first part of third chapter, 312th running Brahma Sutra. Again, this argument comes in Sutra 17 to refute the objections in Sutra 12 is continued again. So I'm just only mentioning this to, to re reveal the continuity. Here Vyasa, the continuity of context. Here Vyasacharya solves an incidental doubt in this sutra. While dealing with Darshanath, he pointed out there are four types of Jivarasis and two of them do not have five stages. Microorganisms, plants and all that. And how do we know the division? This is mentioned in Aitareya Upanishad. In the third chapter, first mantra, it says Itarani cha, Itarani cha, Anda jani cha, Jaru jani cha, Sweda jani cha, Udbid jani cha. It mentions there in that mantra. It's a long mantra. We only took only the relevant portion. Now the doubt that comes is, 
the types of jivarasis is mentioned in chandogya upanishad also where only three types are mentioned in mantra 6.3.1 of chandogya it says tesham kalu tesham kalvesham bhutanam trinyeva bijani bhavanti trinyeva only three types bijani bhavanti andajam jivajam udbijjam iti so that is the that is the mantra so in this portion andajam is same as andajam as given in aitreya upanishad jivajam is also as the womb bond udbijjam also is earth bond but swed swedajam is not mentioned in chandogya so vyasacharya solves this problem by saying that in chandogya upanishad the fourth one is implied and therefore you supply the fourth one namely name, what is the one swedajam and vyasacharya says you cannot just supply you should have reason also so vyasacharya says the word udbijjam can be interpreted in two ways thereby two types of jivarasis can be taken so earth breaking open or penetrating upwards refers to plant kingdom when you plant a seed in the earth the when the seed sprouts it breaks open the earth and then comes out so that is the word, that is where you interpret it, interpret that word so earth breaking open or penetrating towards upwards this first would be planting and in the second this is one in the second interpretation wood is taken as udaka udaka means water so bitwa jayate iti would be jam is one and udaka refers to moisture whatever is born out of moisture is insects microorganisms insects insects and all so because it now refers to both insects and also plant kingdom one word itself so you don't have to it so the gem is also included so all the four beings are included and therefore there is no contradiction that is what vyasa acharya says now let us see the word analysis of this sutra so tritiya shabda avarodah samshoka jasya there is a sutra tritiya shabda avarodah samshoka jasya So, Trithiya Shabdhya Avarota Kasam Jyosaka means beings born of moisture is to be included in the third expression, Pudbhijjam itself, occurring in the Chandogya statement. That is what the, this, this sutra declares that. Now, let us see the significance of the words. Trithiya Shabdhya Avarota Kasam Jyosaka, the third expression, that is the three are interpreted as Udbhijjam, that is the third expression, that is to be Avarota Kasam Jyosaka, inclusion. in the third expression inclusion of swedajam is included in that samshoka jasya here refers to swedajam the moisture bond being is included in the third expression udbijjam itself that is vyasacharya's contention so it should be done with the expression of udbijjam itself so there is no contradiction between chandogya and the other mantra with this the third adhikaranam is also over and in this adhikaranam the tritiya gati our papa karmi is established tritiya gadi is adogadi is established for the papa karmis now let us go to the fourth adhikarana sabhavyapatya adhikarana tat sabhavyaha apattihi upapattehe that is the sutra tat sabhavya apattihi upapattehe third chapter first pada 22nd sutra 313th running brahma sutra so let us do the general analysis of the sutra first this is a small adhikarana with only one sutra previous one was a big sutra adhikarana this is a small sutra small adhikarana and the topic here talks about the ritualists ritualistic people they go to swarga loka going to swarga loka is talked about and then coming down in a particular path after exhausting punya karma because of punya karma they go to swarga loka they stay there for some time enjoy the swarga loka comforts and after exhausting the punya karma they come back to a particular path so prarabdha can be either punyam or papam depending upon the karma that jiva comes through certain particular stages and upanishad gives a long statement as to how they descend <laughs> going up they don't talk then they come down how they descend it says mantra fifth the the uh, chandogya mantra fifth chapter 10th section fifth mantra and the sixth mantra both of them they talk about this tasmin evat sampatam ushitva ataitam evadvanam 
पुनर्निवर्त निवर्तंते यथेतम आकाशम आकाशात वायु वायुर्भूत्वा धूमो भवति धूमो भूत्वा अभ्रम भवति अभ्रम भूत्वा मेघो भवति मेघो भूत्वा प्रवर्षति तैह व्रीहि यवा ओषधि वनस्पतय तिल तिल माषा इति जायन्ते अतो वै खलु दुर्निष्प्रपतरम यो यो हि अन्नमत्ति यो रेतः सिंचति तद भूये भूये एव भवति दिस आर द टू मंत्रस सो हैविंग डवेल्ट देयर देयर मींस व्हाट स्वर्ग लोक हैविंग डवेल्ट देयर एज लॉन्ग एज देयर इज पुण्य दे रिटर्न अगेन बाय दैट कोर्स बाय व्हिच दे कम टू स्पेस सो दे पास थ्रू आकाश आकाश टू वायु फ्रॉम वायु टू स्मोक धूमः फ्रॉम स्मोक टू मिस्ट फ्रॉम मिस्ट टू द रेन रेन बारिंग क्लाउड्स from cloud to raining clouds from raining clouds to rains from the water they enter plant kingdom and they become vegetables and thus enter the father's body purusha's body and then to mother's body and then the upanishad says having become vayu it becomes dhumaha so upanishad uses the word arrival and then it says it becomes it says it becomes it says arrival and then says it becomes then does that means it comes to vayu or it becomes vayu comes to vayu means arrives to vayu it becomes vayu means changes to vayu similarly others also since upanishad uses the word vayu bhutva we have to take it as becoming cloud smoke mist and all that thing by bhutva and siddhanta says it does not become it cannot become if it becomes there's a problem we'll see and siddhanta vedanta in c says it does not become even the upanishad says bhut why should not be taken as becoming but it appears so it is not becoming but it only is a semblance resemblance that alone is logically possible jiva cannot become akasha because of various reasons which we know if jiva becomes akasha then what will happen further stages are not possible jiva cannot become akasha then he cannot become any other thing one thing can never becoming another thing x can never become y one thing is one thing because of its property another thing can be another thing because of its property one should give up one's property and assume the other's property to become that then question is what if one thing becomes another by taking up another set of properties whether it gives up intrinsic property or incidental property because everything has got either intrinsic property intrinsic and incidental properties both everyone has so if a person says it gives up some incidental property that is not acceptable by giving up the incidental property one cannot become the other person or the other thing for example the hair is lost which is very common to all of us if the hair is lost the incident hair is the incidental property that is given up when it is lost you do not take or compare with another person a fat person can become a lean person incidental property change does not mean the change of the subject the person but by giving up the intrinsic property this incidental property by changing giving up the intrinsic property a thing can become another if you say then shankaracharya says that is also not possible because the definition of intrinsic property is what a thing cannot give up that property it is intrinsic fire cannot give away its property of heat it is intrinsic it is its dharma in fact if intrinsic property is given up substance itself will disappear substance cannot disappear because a thing cannot nothing can be destroyed it can become another form the final law is what a thing can never become another it is logically not possible jiva cannot become akasha if this were the case chetanam also will become achetanam sentient things can become insentient and otherwise vice versa that is not possible this is going to be siddhantins assertion now let us see the general analysis of this sutra tat ಸಾಭಾವ್ಯ ಆಪತ್ತಿ ಉಪಪತ್ತೇ ತತ್ ಸಾಭಾವ್ಯ ಆಪತ್ತಿ ಉಪಪತ್ತೇ ತರ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ತತ್ ಸಾಭಾವ್ಯ ಆಪತ್ತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಜೀವಾಸ್ ಅಸಂಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ 
similar to them is implied in the shruti jiva's assumption of various forms similar to them is implied in, in the shruti upapattehe since that is logical that is assumed now while we will give the signals of the words tat sabhavya apatti tat tad refers to various stages and sabhavyam refers to semblance resemblance jiva has resemblance to akasha vayu in the sense of subtlety akasha vayu in this in the sense of subtlety they are subtle apatti means assumption or transformation so we take this meaning by compromising the upanishad word we take this particular meaning because upanishad says becomes but we take this meaning because it's compromising the upanishad word we have reason for that the primary meaning of becoming we compromise and we say it resembles or is similar to akasha vayu and all that we don't say it becomes akasha vayu so for upapattehe that is the reasonable interpretation we cannot interpret in any other way so figurative interpretation alone is reasonable now let us go to the next adhikarana nam atichire atich atichirena visheshat na atichirena visheshat 23rd sutra first part of third chapter 314th running brahma sutra now let us give a general introduction and then general and ask this adhikarana or this particular adhikarana and then give a general analysis of the sutra just to give a basic background and concept so this adhikarana also has only one sutra here vyasacharya answers one question that may arise in our mind because of curiosity especially regarding what happens after death everybody is curious to know that's why asacharya knows this very well so what happens after death and it is based on the mantras from chandogya the mantras that we read the fifth chapter 10th month 10th section fifth mantra and sixth mantra where it is said that jiva comes to akasha resembling akasha and all that thing. just now we read that then jiva comes down through the water resembling water then the upanishad says there afterwards jiva becomes the plant kingdom there afterwards the jiva becomes the plant kingdom now the curiosity is what that may come to our mind is as to how long it takes for the jiva to travel from one stage to another stage this is in panjagni in panjagni vidya we are now asking the question how long it takes for the jiva to travel from one stage to another stage and it is the duration in each state the jiva takes while moving from one state to another that is the discussion and the purupakshi says the duration is unpredictable that is his answer the duration is unpredictable and vyasacharya says there is some predictability the upanishad does not mention the time up to the stages of up to the stage of rains doesn't mention from plant kingdom father mother all that thing coming out to the next stage is difficult from plant kingdom to father to mother that is difficult it is from rainy water onwards it is difficult so swarga loka megha then rainy water comes to earth from then onwards it is difficult because it says the later state is difficult by implication the previous stages are quickly gone but this is by implication so the expression in this connection is it is difficult to emerge through at later stages first stages are fine this is the essence of this sutra now let us see the word analysis nam atichirena visheshat atichirena jiva crosses the initial stages with a short, within a short time na atichirena so the jiva crosses the initial stages within a short time not too long we say short this is understood from this specific expression occurring in this shruti in the veda mantra upanishad now let us give the significance of the words the first expression is what nati chirena not very long nati chirena not very long which means what it is short that is jiva passes through the initial stages in a short period what are the initial stages swarga mega that kind of things we say shat 
This is known from the specific expression in Chandogya Shruti, fifth chapter, ten section, sixth mantra. The stages after rainy water they are more difficult to pass through. So if the rain falls on the earth, only the jiva can pass that stage. Only when the rain falls on earth, the jiva can pass that stage, right? If the rain falls on the ocean, there is no chance of a jiva, manusya jiva, we are talking. There is no chance of the jiva passing to next stage. If the water falls only in the ocean. So even if it falls on the land also, the thing should fall fall on the eatable plant. It should. If it falls falls on the desert, no use. So then only the manusya can eat it. So it should be an eatable plant. Then which type of human it should enter? It should be eaten by the person purusha, not just any female. The purusha should eat it first. Therefore, it should reach a male human being, and then it should reach the woman through the male. In the case, see the, the jiva. We are talking about jiva. Of course, everybody takes food. It should reach the hum, male human being first. and then it should reach through him to the woman through through the male and in the case of males also there are four ashramas brahmachari ashrama grahastha ashrama vanaprastha ashrama sanyasa ashrama so it should be consumed by a jiva he should come to human grahastha ashrama of comparatively young age also a <laughs> grahastha at a later age it is not useful so a grahastha at young age a yeah, human a yeah, yeah, male that person that ready to be to father a child that person should take that food thus the stages from rain onwards are difficult those three stages now let us go to the next adhikaran anya adishtita adhikaran anya adishtite purvavat abilabhat that is the sutra anya adishtite पूर्ववत अभिलाफात दिस इज द 24 सूत्र फर्स्ट पाद थर्ड चैप्टर 315th रनिंग ब्रह्म सूत्र सो द डिस्कशन ऑन द वे ऑफ डिसेंट ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल सोल इंडिविजुअल जीवा इज नाउ कंटिन्यूड हियर आल्सो फर्स्ट लेट अस टू गिव द जनरल इंट्रोडक्शन टू दिस अधिकरण आल्सो विद फोर सूत्र स्लाइटली बिगर अधिकरण देन द प्रीवियस वन सो दिस इज द 6th एंड द फाइनल अधिकरण ऑफ द फर्स्ट पाद ऑफ थर्ड चैप्टर Here the siddhanta that is going to be arrived at is what through panchagni vidya the Upanishad points out jiva goes to heaven swarga then megha then rain food male and female so these are the things so that is the process through which the jiva gets the full form full fledged form once food enters the human male we know. already jiva has one body this is a interesting discussion <laughs> when the food enters the human male we already know that jiva has a body and after consumption of food what happens an external traveling jiva enters male body at a later stage after he consumes the food the thing that has gone through swarga loka mega coming to earth become a plant kingdom and from the plant he takes the food so there is that other external jiva so he the jiva original jiva is the male body and at later stage another traveling jiva comes it is we can call it guest jiva let us say one is host jiva original jiva we call the host jiva the identifying with the body that is called the host jiva and the guest jiva comes from heaven mega rain and all that through plants to male body so the difference between the host jiva and guest jiva is what at the time of conception the guest jiva gets transferred to the mother guest jiva goes to the mother when guest jiva enters the mother the story is the same because mother also has got the host jiva her body and the guest jiva enters into her as in the case of the male so here also we see a guest and host jiva in the mother also so the guest of father jiva has become guest of mother jiva and that jiva stays there for about 10 months and develops itself into a full fledged body and comes out and that we call it as a baby so this is the guest jiva became baby so the difference between the two jivas is what the host jiva alone will have abhimana with the body deha abhimana is for what the host jiva 
with the body because of karmas. I have the abhimana because of karmas. Similarly, the host jiva will have the abhimana with the female body also, and that abhimana is also caused by karma of the female. So when the guest jiva enters the body, it is not connected with karma, and therefore guest jiva does not have abhimana with male or female body. It doesn't have abhimana with the male or female. It, it is going to have its own body later, and it will have abhimana with that. But when it is inside the male body or female body, it doesn't have abhimana with those bodies. If both the guest and host divas they have abhimana, then both will have abhimana with the body. So many karma complications will come. So the guest jiva occupies the body and it does not have abhimana of that body. Sharira abhimana jiva and sharira antargada jiva are two things. Sharira antargada jiva, the one that is inside the body, is the guest jiva, guest body. Sharira abhimana jiva is the host body. So suppose there is some wound or some injury, let us say, on the father or the mother. This pain caused by the physical wound will go to which jiva? Sharira antargada jiva or sharira abhimana jiva? Sharira abhimana jiva only. The Shastra says, Sharira abhimana jiva alone will suffer pains and pleasure. The guest jiva will not suffer because of the problems of the guest house in the form of male or female. So male or female are guest house for the guest jiva. So it suffers sukham and dukkham only when it takes its own body after birth. So the full-fledged jiva comes at the end of the fifth stage of Punjabi. And that jiva then only starts experiencing the sukham and dukkham. So the Upanishad wants to extend this to the tree body also. Because plant kingdom. In the plant also, there are two jivas. There is the original tree, the tree jiva. One is the Vriksha Bhimani jiva, which has come because of Punya Papas. And within the plant, there is an Abhimani jiva, Vriksha Bhimani jiva. And the jiva that enters is not Abhimani jiva from the Panjagni. So in Panjagni, when we talk in the plant, we talk of Antargada Jiva and not Abhimani Jiva. Antargada Jiva is not Abhimani Jiva. And this Jiva occupies the plant temporarily. It's like this Jiva. And with rudimentary human body. It has the rudimentary human body. And we should not forget that. It occupies the plant. And then rudimentary body goes to the male, Purusha. And then to female before taking the full-fledged human body. So this is Siddhanta, Vyasacharya wants to establish in this sutra, in this Adhikarana. So the jiva occupying the tree during the stage, third stage of Panjagni Vidya, Swarga, Mega, tree, Panjagni Vidya in the earth, is an Antargada jiva and not Abhimani jiva. So once you say it is Antargada jiva, the corollary is what? Whatever sukham and dukkham we get through plant body will not belong to antargada traveling jiva. But it will belong to another jiva, which is an abhimana jiva, which we call it as host jiva. So for this, Purva Pakshi, he comes now and he says, the Shastra does not make it clear between abhimani jiva and antargada jiva. So what is the Upanishadic statement that contributes to this con confusion? He quotes, he quotes from Chandogya. Chandogya, 5th chapter, 10th section, 6th mantra, that we already saw. The verb jayate, jayante is there, that contributes to the conclusion. Abram bhutva mego bhavati, mego bhutva parvarshati, taiha vrihi eva oshadi vanaspataya, thila, thil, thila masha iti jayante. So that word jayante, while talking about the third stage of jiva, from the earth it becomes, it comes in contact with the plant as gas jiva. However, the Upanishad says that jiva is born as plants and trees, jayante. In fact, there will not be panchagni itself. After heaven, cloud and earth, if jiva is born as plants, it will cross only after the three stages. It is going to be born after two stages without identifying as plants and without going through the sukham and dukkham of plants plants and all that, plant kingdom. And then it comes to the fourth stage of the male and female body, fifth stage. So the word jayante should be used now. When it comes there only, the word jayante should be used. 
the verb jayanti must be translated here as temporary residence of plants without suffering the pleasure and pains of the plant body. The word verb jayanti should not be only in the for the purusha nari case jayanti should come. Here it should be taken only as translated as a temporary residence of plants. Jayanti verb should be taken as lakshyartha samsarga prapti and not janma prapti. Visheha. Visheha is jayanti. And the doubt is what? Whether Jayante means becoming an Abhimani Jiva or Antargada Jiva. And Purupakshi says Abhimani Jiva Habavati and it is a birth in the form of a plant. Plant is not a vehicle but it is only an Ayatana. The logic for this is what? That the plant is not, is the, that the verb Jayante has got the Mukhya Artha Abhimana Jiva. So primary meaning and any other meaning, if, if there are there, Mukhyartham only is strong. So he also gives another logic for that. And he says, these jivas who come through the five stages, they have gone to Sargaloka by Krishna Gati. That passage, because of their Vedic rituals. Another one small interesting point I would just say before I conclude today. Of course, we have a few more minutes. Krishna gave the passage because of their Vedic rituals. Upasakas would have given them, would have, would have, would have given them what? Shukla Gati. If they are Upasana, would have given them for Upasakas. But Vedic rituals, Vedic rituals means here only all the, sha, the yagas and yagyas. Vedic rituals are wonderful. They are Punya Karmas, all right. But what happens? Since they involve animal sacrifice, it has a mixture of papams also because of Pashu Himsa. This is very subtle. Even though Vedic ritual, Ignyas, Yagas are all wonderful karmas, they give a lot of punyam, people can go to Swargaloka and all also with all that. But since they involve animal sacrifice, it has a mixture of papams also because of Pashu Himsa. And because of Punya Karma, he goes to Swargaloka. Later, he may, because of the Punya Karma acquired by that that Yaga, he will go to Svargaloka, all right. But later, he may become a human being also, all right. But before becoming a human bomb form, he must become a plant or some other lower, lower Bajivarasi because of the Pashu Himsa involved in the animal sacrifice. So it is a birth as a plant, suffers for a short while, and then comes to male body, female body, etc. It is natural justice. Shastra says this is natural justice. This is Purva Pakshi's argument. Siddhanta says that there is no birth as plants at all. He is not born as a plant at all. This jiva coming through Panjagni stages is not born as plants and it only travels through the plant body without going through the pleasure and pains of the plant body, male body and of the female body. So when it gathers its own bhoga sharira, after it is born, it will experience sukham and dukkham. That is what Siddhanti says. We will see the details in the next class. Yo veda dausvara prokto vedante chapitthitaha tasya prakadilina seya parasamaheshwara. Purnamata Purnamidam Purna Purnamudachate Purna Sepurna Madaya Purna Meva Vasishate Om Shanti 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 Shri Guru Jana Maha Om Sri Krishna Prasthi